We will begin by framing the lesson for today's video, which is the first component of the Fundamental Five. As the Curriculum and Instruction Department, we will discuss the rationale, expectations and outcomes, video design and tools needed for successful implementation of PLCs. You will gain understanding of the PLC process, know what tools are necessary for all planning, and be able to analyze student data to drive instruction and ensure student success. The curriculum preview series is developed to engage teachers in joint work by academic areas to accomplish improvements in teaching and learning. Teachers will work collaboratively through this video series by pausing at specific times to dialogue and think through each lesson and implement high yield instructional strategies. To create a professional learning community, or PLC, educators must focus on learning rather than teaching, work collaboratively, and hold ourselves accountable for results. Everyone must continually ask the three crucial questions that drive the work within a PLC. What do we want each student to learn? How will we know each student has learned it? And how will we respond when a student doesn't learn? Materials teachers will need for the PLC curriculum meetings are the Instructional Focus Documents or IFDs, Lead Forward's Organizing Instruction using the TEKS standard types, what we will call the Content Builder, and Lead Forward's PLC for Content PLC. Each PLC curriculum preview video will follow this design structure. The first component will be the upcoming unit overview. The upcoming unit overview will review units in upcoming six weeks, provide assessment blueprints and timeframes, list materials needed for PLC collaboration. The second component is the content builder. To complete the content builder, teachers will utilize the IFD. The content builder is one of the documents that will be submitted to the campus designee. The purpose of the content builder is to thoroughly think about the appropriate standards to engage in order to ensure student success. Think of your planning as this set of bookends. The process standards hold up the readiness standards. The supporting standards are spiraled in with the readiness standards. Let's take a closer look. The process standards, indicated by blue, are the standards that are used in every unit with different content, increases the rigor, and is used in 50 to 80% of tests. On the front end, the process standards are the tools students need to know. They are the strategies and structures students use to gain access to learning. The readiness standards, indicated in green, are content area concepts that are essential for success in the current grade level. These are important and often complex concepts for current and future learning. The supporting standards are the scaffolds of learning to support the teaching of the readiness standards. Supporting standards support the content, the concepts, and the context to help students develop important major concepts. The back end of the content builder also ends with the process standards because process standards flow through the instruction and the learning process. The final process standard you select will consider how students will demonstrate, communicate, and apply concepts and content. By systematically planning out the standards, the educator has addressed the three essential questions. What do you want students to learn? How will you know they have learned it? And what will you do if they don't? This is a completed fifth grade math content builder. The third component is data analysis. When looking at a weather map shaded by colors of the spectrum from red to violet, hot spots could be easily identified. The places that have higher temperatures are usually red or orange on a map. Take a moment to brainstorm collaboratively the following questions with your PLC members. What if we mapped student performance data in the same way? 
Where would the data hotspots be? What if they were clustered around the readiness standards? Data heat maps are visualizations that create color-coded maps of student performance at the student expectation level of the TEKS. The data heat maps are designed to help identify critical areas for teacher support and professional development. Hotspots are determined by utilizing Lead Forward Analyzing Learning Standards, which leverages longitudinal STAR data. The content coordinator will identify the targeted hotspots from the heat map for PLC teams. This particular heat map provides three years worth of district fifth grade STAR results data. After the coordinator has provided the hotspot, teams will use the unit IFDs and review the standard and unit level specificity. The fourth component is collaboration and creation. Throughout the video, PLC teams will be instructed to pause for small group purposeful talk. After the hotspot has been identified, teams will be given seed questions to collaborate and create a plan for student learning. A component of the Fundamental Five, seed questions are essential to guiding and focusing conversations to the desired learning outcomes. Using the PLC for the content PLC page as a tool for creating lessons, classroom instruction will move to a higher level of understanding as well as offer opportunities for students to transfer information. Teams will use the identified hotspot as a starting point. They should reread the standard to fully understand the level specificity and cognitive rigor of the standard in order to select the appropriate stimulus and thinking for the process standards. Next, teachers should discuss and choose how students will show evidence of their learning. Last, teachers should discuss and choose the instructional strategies that will best demonstrate students' evidence of learning. The fifth component of the PLC curriculum preview series is modeled instructional strategies. In each video, we will model two research-based instructional strategies to demonstrate best practices from some of the nation's proven and widely used educational resources. The strategies we model will align with the rigor and the appropriate cognitive level of the standard. The final and sixth component is evidence of learning. Since our focus is to ensure students learn, their evidence of learning should directly align with the rigor of the standard and appropriate cognitive level of thinking. The evidence of learning can be simple or complex according to the standard and can include products such as various modes of writing, such as a quick write, reflection, journal entry, or a formal paper. Authentic writing assists students in processing their thinking and makes the task authentic. Diagrams, such as a map, a story map, graphs, charts, and drawings, which include student thoughts and or textual evidence, are all evidences of learning. Oral, written, and or medial presentations are additional evidences of learning. As we close and reflect on today's curriculum preview, please take a sticky note from your table to complete a strategy called 3, 2, 1. What three tools will you need for the PLC curriculum preview? What two ideas square with your own thinking? What one question is circling around in your mind? Thank you for your time and the curriculum and instruction department looks forward to working with you.